The holiday season of 1989 was an exciting time to be a kid. The Simpsons premiered on television. Clark Griswold finished his annual Christmas display featuring 25,000 twinkling lights. The new kids on the block were having a funky, funky Christmas, and just about every kid had the Nintendo Game Boy circled on their Toys R Us holiday catalog. If you've got a kid on your Christmas list, give them what they want. A new Game Boy from Nintendo. It's just $89. It was the time of year when companies became hyper-focused on marketing to children. Cross-promotion was king. For example, families visiting Pizza Hut could snag an amazing pair of solar shades inspired by the futuristic year of 2015. Now bring part of Back to the Future back with you. Drop by any Pizza Hut restaurant and get a pair of futuristic solar shades inspired by the movie Back to the Future Part 2. If seafood was more your thing, Long John Silver's had a pretty cool offer for anyone interested in grabbing a poster from the holiday film Prancer. Dog lovers might find themselves at Wendy's to grab one of six All Dogs Go to Heaven figurines you discover in a kid's meal. These lovable characters are only at Wendy's, and there's two ways to get them for the holidays. There's one inside each Wendy's kid's meal, or get one for just 99 cents when you buy an order of regular fries. Isn't that wonderful? Mm. All Dogs Go to Heaven characters. Collect all six for your pups, now at Wendy's. And while I'm a huge fan of animator Don Bluth, All Dogs Go to Heaven just couldn't compare to Disney's 28th full-length animated film, The Little Mermaid. The popularity of Ariel and her friends created a kind of mermaid madness right before the holiday season. Amongst all the toys and apparel, our favorite fast food franchise jumped on the bandwagon with some special holiday ornaments featuring the Little Mermaid. So come to McDonald's, hurry along, like a true fantasy. It's here then, to go on. your holiday place. Welcome to another episode of McDonald's Unboxed, where we uncover the truth behind the fast food chain's promotional tie-ins. If that sounds like fun, then do us a favor and click that like button, and why not supersize your experience by subscribing to Retro Spectrum. So have you ever noticed how stories and mythologies seem to change and transform the more they're told? Take, for example, a certain Kris Kringle. There are so many different versions of the holiday gift giver, ranging from St. Nicholas, Father Christmas, Pierre Noel, Black Santa, White Santa, Stop Motion Santa. It's like the show Loki. I like to imagine there are all these Santa variants running loose, and it's up to all the elves at the North Pole to keep them in check. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. The reality is that people are drawn to a version of the gift giver that is most relevant to them. Maybe it's about looks or representation, or perhaps it's all about nostalgia. There is no wrong way to celebrate Christmas. As as long as we can all agree that the tree stays up until Epiphany. If you can't keep the tree up until January 6, you're just some kind of monster. You know, Denmark has its own version of Saint Nick known as Yulemander or the Christmas Man. It was an idea that was adopted after World War II and was inspired by the American Santa Claus. Before that time, Danish tradition was all about the niece, these little gnome-like creatures that had hide in the homes and farms of Dutch people. They remind me a bit of like Elf on a Shelf, super mischievous and even a bit temperamental. They are easily offended by carelessness and disrespect, so it's probably a good idea to be on your best behavior all year long. They even leave presents at the homes of good children. Isn't it funny how society has oftentimes used supernatural factors to impact the behavior of kids? Take, for example, the Danish fairy tale, The Little Mermaid, written by Hans Christian Andersen. You know, Disney made some pretty big changes from the original, which was much, much darker. For example, walking around on human legs was extremely painful, and if The Little Mermaid can't get the prince to love her, she'll dissolve into sea foam. 
Unlike the Disney version, she does not live happily ever after with the prince. However, in a strange twist of fate, the Little Mermaid is adopted by the Daughters of the Air. She's offered a chance to enter heaven after a 300 year wait, but the time period is shortened by the good behavior of children. So, you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Because your actions actually help Ariel get into heaven. So the original story and the 1989 film are extremely different. But maybe that's how these things work. The target audience in 1837 was probably a lot different than the one Disney was catering to in the late 80s. In the same way, I hope to see some major changes from the live action version of The Little Mermaid set to release in 2023. Personally, I don't really see the point of making a carbon copy of a film that already exists. That said, there seems to be a lot of controversy surrounding the race of the Little Mermaid. Not from children, mind you. They don't seem to stress out about that kind of thing. No, typically it comes down to grown-ups frightened and frustrated by change. Well, I've got some great news for those people. Even after the live action version of the Little Mermaid drops, the 1989 version with the red hair and the pale complexion will still exist. It's not like Disney's been going around rounding up all the original classics and locking them in a vault as soon as the remake hits theaters. Again, it's like the show Loki. There's room for variants of The Little Mermaid. The mermaid thing has certainly been a fashionable trend throughout popular culture, offering us a number of different takes. For example, Authors like C.S. Lewis, L. Frank Baum, and J.K. Rowling have given us their takes on the fishy females. James M. Barry included a community of mermaids in the play, Peter Pan. These ladies would also make an appearance in Disney's version of the tale. Of course, if you can't manage enough pixie dust for the trip to Neverland, consider visiting Wachee Springs in the state of Florida. There, you can encounter actual mermaids that have been entertaining guests since 1947. If you have a few bucks, drop it in one of those moldomatic machines and bring home your very own miniature mermaid. Not to be outdone, Disneyland in California offered park attendees a chance to see mermaids swimming around Tomorrowland Lagoon starting in 1959. These bathing beauties stuck around for almost a decade. In 1984, Touchstone Pictures released its first film, Splash. It's a romantic comedy starring Daryl Hannah and Tom Hanks. You know, it was only recently upon re-watching the film that I realized that both Eugene Levy and the legendary John Candy were also part of this phenomenal cast. Similar to The Little Mermaid, Splash gives us a unique opportunity to experience what human life would be like for a merfolk experiencing it for the first time. I also enjoyed how director Ron Howard used hair extensions to cover up all of Madison's naughty bits in order to maintain that PG rating. My other, other favorite 80s mermaid was Annie from Goonies 2. Goonies 2. I think I would have remembered a sequel to one of the greatest films of all time. Yeah, that's because it was a video game released on the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1987. Mikey has to save the rest of the Goonies from the Fratellis. And what about Annie the Mermaid? What she got to do with the Goondocks? Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess mermaids and, and pirates are like peas and carrots. It's the one-two punch of nautical tradition. The 80s may have been a good time for mermaids, but it was quite a challenging decade for Disney animation. Films like The Fox and the Hound and The Great Mouse Detective were a modest financial success, and The Black Cauldron was a commercial flop. What's more, former Disney animator Don Bluth was achieving both critical and commercial success over at Amblin Productions with films like An American Tale and The Land Before Time. Disney was looking to regain their crown as the number one name in animation with its 28th full-length animated film, The Little Mermaid. Audiences immediately fell in love with Ariel. 
The animation was great. The story was quintessentially Disney. And the music, well, the music is the best part. In fact, Disney's The Little Mermaid won an Academy Award for Best Original Score and Best Song for Under the Sea. Under the Sea. The merchandising that followed was pretty amazing as well. Capcom released a video game on the NES that some would say was even better than Goonies 2. Some people, not me. We also snagged some outstanding Little Mermaid Happy Meal toys in 1989. You get one with each Little Mermaid Happy Meal you buy, only at McDonald's. She's Ariel, Disney's The Little Mermaid. She lives under the sea in a world of wonder. And now there's elegant Holiday Ariel in her sparkling gown and fancy fur hat. She's so beautiful. Holiday Ariel even has a fur-trimmed fin and flounders there to celebrate too. Ariel's popularity continued into the the 90s with a game on the Sega Genesis as well as one of those LCD titles from Tiger Electronics. You can guide Ariel as she collects human objects, but beware of the evil sea witch Ursula. And you can help Prince Eric in his fight to win Ariel forever. Disney's The Little Mermaid. Batteries not included from Tiger. In 1992, the Voyage of the Little Mermaid stage show first appeared in Disney's MGM Studios. It was a phenomenal production featuring puppetry, black light, lasers, and all your favorite songs. Plus, Ursula was amazing. In addition to being one of my favorite Disney villains, I think she may be the best part of The Little Mermaid. Next, go under the sea. Come on. Where Sebastian's rocking and everybody's talking about that awesome Ariel in Disney's The Little Mermaid. Next on CBS Kid TV. That same year, we experienced a new animated series distributed by Buena Vista Television called, well, The Little Mermaid. The show was extremely well done. In addition to chronicling Ariel's adventures before the film, it also included a number of new songs throughout the series. I guess this one didn't pop up on McDonald's radar because it was actually Burger King who invited Ariel and her friends to be part of their popular kids club meal. You can collect all four, one with every kids meal, only at Burger King before they swim away. When the Happy Meal celebrated its birthday in 1994, Ariel would be a part of the festivities alongside the Muppet Babies and the Tiny Toons. In 1997, Disney's The Little Mermaid was re-released in theaters, and McDonald's gave us yet another Happy Meal promotion with even more toys. The magic of The Little Mermaid has come to McDonald's in a Happy Meal that captures all the fun of Disney's musical adventure, The Little Mermaid. There are eight toys in all, one in every $1.99 hamburger your happy meal you buy your kids. Thank you. Come again. The Little Mermaid Happy Meal. Only you know, Ariel certainly has spent a lot of time at Mickey D's over the years. That's true. Do you have a favorite fast food promotion? That would have to be the Little Mermaid holiday ornaments in 1989. Yeah, let's check it out. Look who's on the front of it. You've got Ariel and Flounder. That's right. And this is the Flounder plush, as you can tell. This came out in the holiday season of 1989. I think we've made that clear in this video. That's right. And then who's on the back of it? Well, it's Flounder, of course, because that's who's in the box, right? I always love this character. And one last thing I think we should point out, they're always so good at getting their brand in there. That's right, right there on a sale. All right, so let's open this bad boy up and check out what is on the inside. We already know who it is, but let's check out what it looks like. I'm very excited to see what this holiday plush ornament looks like. It's oh, definitely flounder. Wow, I didn't even know he has a hat on. I'm pretty excited because the one we purchased is actually just in pristine condition. The right? colors are great. And flounder has a great color scheme. These, these light blue with the yellow. I'm just imagining myself in 1989 opening one of these up. And it would have been a big deal because that movie oh, it was, was, huge. was such a huge thing. Yeah, sure, it, it's great. Now let's get out of here. Oh, you're not getting cold fins now, are you? Of course, Flounder needs a friend. It's Sebastian! That's right, and Sebastian, they decked him out, even more so than Flounder. Look at all his winter wear. You got a scarf, you got some mittens, you got some earmuffs. I didn't even know he had ears. Did you know yeah, he had I ears? I know, but check out, check out it out. He's very art 
articulate. I there's mean, a, he's got legs and he's got his little shell. There's a lot going on here, and I, I just think it's cool that we're able to snag both of these and have the entire collection. I hope that you appreciate what I go through for you, young lady. Well, we hope you all enjoyed stepping back in time and reliving a special promotion from Christmas past. Now we'd like to hear from you in the comments. What do you think about these holiday ornaments and, you know, would they make the cut for your Christmas tree? Also, are you excited for a live action version of Ariel or do you prefer the animated variety? Let us know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please drop a like and consider subscribing to Retro Spectrum so you don't miss a single episode of McDonald's Unboxed. Happy Holidays!